Art theft is also the subject of best-selling author Daniel Silva's new book, The Heist. The character Gabriel Alon returns going inside the secret world of stolen art to save his friend Daniel Silva joins us at the table. Welcome back, Daniel Good Silva. Good morning. Thank it's you been for too having long. me. Listen, you took us on quite a wild ride. I was reading the book and Googling at the same time because I wanted to look up the pieces you were talking about. Right. Because the purpose behind this book started with your obsession, I guess you'd call it, with a missing, still missing today, the Caravaggio's nativity scene. Um, That's the premise of this book. It is. The, it, um, Caravaggio's, of course, the great Italian painter, kind of a wild man, mm -hmm. um, killed a... a a man in Rome in a, in a sword fight and um, had to go on the run. He ended up late in his life in, in Sicily where he painted this one of the last paintings of his career, very brief career, was this nativity with St. Uh, Francis and St. Lawrence. It hung in a very small chapel in the middle of Palermo until a very dark and stormy night, mm -hmm. believe it or not, in October 1969. Two thieves walked in. They didn't do it like Thomas Crown. They actually slashed it. It's seven by eight foot painting from the frame and walked out with it. And it remains missing today. It remains what? missing to this day. It is the number one target of the Italian art squad, a very competent um, group of art detectives. The Italians were the very first ones to form a dedicated uh, unit to, to art crime. And it remains at the top of the FBI's list as well. They listed as, as value about $20 million. No way. Yeah. I mean, that could it be worth at least 100 it, It's yeah, priceless. Do you know these guys well, the, these art squad detectives? Uh, I, I don't actually. I kept a little distance from them. I have some entree to them. Um, I wanted to create my fictitious General Ferrari who's appeared in a, in a couple of books, but I do have in, um, incredible contacts within the art mm -hmm. world. Um, and I've heard some hair-raising stories. Um, you remember the famous Gardner heist in, mm -hmm. in, in, um, in Boston. Boston right? um, I have a friend who swears on a stack of Bibles that he walked in to an apartment in Tokyo and saw one of the paintings wow. hanging at the end of the hallway. Because you're but saying... So wait, wait, wait. What did he do about it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Called he said, Daniel. what a beautiful painting. <laughs> yeah. I mean, did he call the police and say, I was at a dinner? He, and was... uh, he um, made appropriate inquiries, and that's right. all I could say right, about right. it. But you say the art theft is a really big business. It I didn't is. realize that. It is. It but is it was four to six billion dollars by Interpol's estimates of art and other uh, paintings and other objects, art objects, goes missing every single year. Four to six billion. That means that art crime is the fourth most lucrative form of illicit activity in the world. Why don't we so, hear about it? Why don't we hear about it? Um, because it is a crime that is generally uh, perpetrated against rich individuals mm -hmm. who sometimes uh, don't report um, everything that's stolen from them, institutions, and there's a lot of crime in the world. And that was one of the things that, that um, uh, police forces had to overcome, uh, um, that this sort of indifference to our crime, because it's a crime committed largely against very yeah, wealthy I mean, people. What's great about this story is, you know, Gail, mm -hmm. I mean, isn't she a great reader, somebody who yeah. sits there with a Google so that she can fill in the yeah. thing? Yeah, yeah, my worst nightmare. No, no, like, <laughs> oh, your worst nightmare? No, it, it's just stuck in the back. You have, it's something yeah. that writers have to contend with now, right? Yeah. That we all sit with, no matter yeah. what we're Whatever doing. Whatever you say, somebody can look it up. Um, and so yeah. Um, yeah. we're very I careful about every little aspect of research that goes into it. What's interesting about this story is, is, is the notion that that somebody that that Gabriel has to save his life's friend yeah. by uh, finding the painting. Yeah, right? yeah. and um, well, has twist has to be pressured into it. He, he said a dear friend of his that has appeared in all of the Alain novels, an art dealer. Um, who has a way of stumbling into trouble all the time. His name is Julian Isherwood. <laughs> That's a good way to put Gail it. Gail knows him well. Yeah. Uh, and in Julie. this case, <laughs> Julie, yeah. uh, <laughs> Juicy <laughs> Julian Isherwood, he stumbles upon a dead body in, in Lake Como. Um, uh, the Italian authorities use that as leverage to get Gabriel Lon into the field to try to track down And off painting. we go. And uh, art theft or ownership is a great way to conceal wealth as well. I thought uh -huh. it was interesting the former journalist in you perhaps coming out in this author's note talking a bit about the Assad family um, oh. and the revolutions in the Arab world of 2011 inspiring some of well, this. Well, the, um, look, the Gabriel's search for this Caravaggio 
uh, leads him to a mysterious collector in the Middle East and eventually um, into the, directly into the heart of the Syrian civil war. Um, and as you know, I mean, one of the most fascinating aspects of this Arab Spring was the way that it laid bare the extraordinary wealth that a lot of these guys have accumulated. I lived in Egypt. We knew that the Mubarak family had it pretty good. Mm -hmm. But when he fell, I mean, by some estimates, he was worth $70 billion. $70 billion, that'd be making one of the richest men in the world. Muammar Gaddafi had at least that much. And the Assads um, are almost certainly billionaires many times over. Professional asset hunters are trying to track down that money. Governments and intelligence services are trying to track yeah. down that money. Why? Because if we can find it, we can apply leverage to them and get them to perhaps to moderate their behavior and the way they're mm -hmm. conducting this. And can way. I just point out, this is another big book from you, Daniel Silva, and that you really do everything on yellow legal paper. Yeah, my handwriting is even worse than yours, <laughs> yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I yeah. thought I was that's bad. That's not a compliment. Yeah, that's yeah, mine is that's bad. Sanskrit. I don't know how you can use that. <laughs> Daniel Silva, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much.